This is Phil Travis here, and uh, it's week nine um, here at uh, EOU for History 201. Um, this is my little little pup dog, Mossy, who's joined us for the announcement, um, though he obviously uh, would rather um, lick himself than pay attention to uh, to me in this announcement. But um, So this week, uh, it's week nine, we are getting into... Um, the kind of lead up to the development of the Civil War, we're going to be reading from our textbook, uh, Give, Me, Give Me Liberty uh, by Eric Foner. We'll also be reading uh, the Lincoln-Douglas debates in our primary source reader. Uh, we have a quiz this week, um, so make sure you do the quiz. Um, the quiz will be um, on this week's recorded lecture. So I have a recorded lecture, it's from YouTube, it's on Bleeding Kansas, um, which one could argue the Civil War actually began in Kansas in the late 1850s. Um, rather than at Fort Sumter in, uh, in 1861. Um, so we're going to be reading about um, how uh, we sort of see the origins of, of um, the origins of the Civil War uh, with respect to bleeding Kansas as Kansas uh, began to move into the United States uh, as a state and people from the South and the North both sought to influence whether or not that state would be a free state or a slave state, and it led to, of course, um, uh, some pretty intense violence um, in, uh, in the state. So we'll be um, watching this presentation relating to this. I want you to watch that presentation. I've also got the PowerPoint up there for those of you who like to use the PowerPoint for notes. Uh, the presentation's in YouTube, and um, you can uh, watch the presentation while you take the quiz. Just open it up in YouTube and open the quiz up and watch the presentation while you uh, watch the uh, uh, presentation while you take the quiz. Uh, the quiz is not timed; it's just designed to make sure that you watch my my lecture presentation. So, um, so we have a quiz this week. It's week nine, so we have next week is our last week uh, before our last test. The test is not cumulative; it's just another test. Uh, there is a third paper option as well. Um, for next week, remember you only have to do one paper. So if you've already done one paper and you're happy with your grade, then um, then you don't have to worry about doing the next paper. And I will get anybody who submitted the last paper this past week, I'll get that graded soon. Uh, but you only have to do one paper. Uh, if you weren't happy with your grade and you saw my feedback from your paper, whether you did the first or the second, you can do the third paper option and I will drop the lowest, uh, lowest grade. So if you want to pull your score up, uh, you can do the last paper, uh, which is due um, next week. You can do the last paper to pull that paper grade up a little bit. Um, so we're right down the home stretch. We're getting into some of the most interesting material of the class, of course, pertaining to um, uh, the American Civil War. Um, and so uh, let's let's not get any end of term itis here. Let's make sure that we, you know, focus and uh, keep up the good work in the discussion forum and uh, with the last assignments and with the readings as we are getting into some material that's you know, really quite fascinating and quite important for us uh, to understand as Americans today. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's about it. This week, oh by the way, this week in our discussion forum, I just want to make a little note. Um, so in light of um, uh, national events, um, this week's discussion forum, I'm asking you to talk a little bit about not only the origins of the Civil War, but also how we remember the Civil War and how we um, how we consider the Confederacy in um, in history. Should the Confederacy's leaders and its legacies be something you know for public memorialization, or is it something that should be re reserved for the history books and um, and the museums? And so I want you I want to have a discussion on this this week. Please make sure we're respectful. I understand that folks have some very passionate viewpoints. Um, in this respect, on this issue, on um, both sides, so make sure you are respectful. If I deem a post to be disrespectful in any way, um, you know, I do reserve the right. I could give you a zero for the entire week's discussion, and I don't want to do that. I don't like to do that, um, and it's very rare that that has ever happened, um, but make sure you're respectful so that, um, you know, we are, you know, behaving in a manner that um, is comfortable for all individuals in the class. All right, the factoid for this week. The factoid for this week is this. Um, Franklin Pierce, who was um, uh, the second to last president before Abraham Lincoln, 
Uh, this is the factoid. Remember, email me this factoid and uh, get your extra point towards a test score at the end of the term. Uh, Franklin Pierce was uh, a northerner. He was president of the United States following um, uh, Millard Fillmore, who, of course, took over for Zachary Taylor. And, um, of course, uh, he, was he preceded um, James Buchanan, who, of course, was the president uh, when secession uh, occurred and was the president just before the inauguration of Abraham Lincoln. Well, Franklin Pierce, interesting factoid about Franklin Pierce, uh, Franklin Pierce has been sometimes regarded by historians as maybe even an alcoholic, uh, though it's reputed he didn't drink while he was in the White House. Uh, Franklin Pierce was noted for um, enjoying the, um, the spirits a little bit, and some regarded him, looking back, as maybe an alcoholic. And uh, the reason was is because American politics in the uh, 1800s was often something that occurred over drinks in taverns and so forth. Taverns in uh, the 19th century were, were places for socialization as well as, um, you know, uh, political discussions. Uh, we didn't have um, televisions, and so politicians, um, you know, built... Um, their sort of relationship and reputation with other individuals in society, um, oftentimes through their um, interactions in local taverns. And Franklin Pierce was particularly noted for that. And uh, as a result of this, um, you know, Franklin Pierce uh, you know, drank a fair amount, and some historians regarded him as, um, uh, as potentially maybe an alcoholic before he became president. Um, and interestingly, the uh, United States during this time generally has sometimes been referred to as, you know, an alcohol republic, if you will, because of the role of alcohol um, and in American politics. So, you know, you buy somebody a drink, you slap them on the back, you talk about the family, uh, you know, tell them, you know, express issues that, uh, that may be important to you and so forth. So um, in the 1800s, um, you know, alcohol was actually a very important part of American democracy. Uh, so that's the factoid for this week. Franklin Pierce and uh, drink and American democracy in the 1800s. All right, let's have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions.